Hi everybody, Alan from West3D, and I am happy to announce I am finally getting to do my V0 build. It's taken a long time, but I've got everything together, and I've now got a deadline. We are going to the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival in just about a month from the day that I'm shooting this. So I want to take a printer with me, and the V0 is the obvious choice. So... I have a month to build a V0, and I hope I can get it done uh, in and around work and family and everything. So I'm going to take a couple minutes and run through what I'm doing, and then I'll talk about kind of what the plan is for the video series. So to start with, we have a V01 kit. Uh, I purchased this probably, I think, September of 2022. Uh, and that's how long it's taken me to actually get my act together to do this build. So this is the V01 kit, but you'll see that I've got some of the S1 parts coming in to kind of beef it up a little bit. So to go with the V01 kit is the V02 upgrade kit. So this has some additional hardware and a couple of 24-volt uh, fans, as well as the new extrusions and panels. This is the 100-millimeter high top hat, so that'll give me a little bit more room for my wiring, which will be nice. As part of this build, I want to concentrate on some of our house brand parts. So this is not to say that any of the parts that you get with the LDO kit are bad or substandard, but I just want to go a little bit step above. So the first product that I'm going to be talking about is I have our BDF or Best Damn Fastener kits for the V0. These are black stainless steel fasteners. These will give me the best corrosion resistance and they just look really nice. If you've built a V0 or have talked to people that build V0s, one of the things that can happen is you forget to preload nuts into the frame and then that's a problem to deal with. So to combat that, I have some of the new 5015 slide-in nuts just in case I want to add any mods or forget to preload. I've got my printed parts done. Uh, I am using KVP Stellar Black as well as KVP Metallic Gray. I've got everything going here. I did some two color prints for my mini stealth burner. I'm going to start with the mini stealth burner. I might move to a dragon burner later on. And there's a great model available on printables for this multicolor display housing. And I've also done the very popular two color skirts for the printer as well. I'm going to be using a couple of our ACM panels that will help insulate the build volume a little bit as well as keep some heat away from the electronics and the power supply. And as you can see, I was playing around with the laser engraver at the shop. So I've done a little custom, very understated engraving on my deck plate. I'm going to be making some upgrades to the motion system as well. To start with, I'm using our Berserker V0 motion kit. This comes with ABEC 9 rated ceramic hybrid bearings, which are a very tight tolerance and should give me excellent wear resistance. Gates pulleys, as well as Gates EPDM belts for better wear and heat resistance, and a new palm nut. I'm also using West 3D's Berserker rails on my build. Uh, these are 440C stainless steel, medium preload, and are built to our house spec. So these are a very good performing, long wearing linear rail. Uh, I'm not gonna take it out of the plastic right now, but it does have grease ports for easy maintenance. These should really help improve things, and again, it's not to say that the LDO rails are not good. I just really want to go that next step in reliability and quality. 
So some of the other things I'm going to be working with is I have the LDO Kirigami bed kit. Um, this is pretty standard at this point. Uh, I know that it's included in the S1 and most people have used them, but this is just a, uh, a formed bed that gives you better rigidity than uh, the one made out of extrusions. This also comes with some Wagos and other parts to make the wiring easier. Again, most people are familiar with these. I'm also installing the new uh, LDO build plate upgrade, which was introduced with the S1 kit. So this is the thermistor that screws into the bottom of the bed. And let me grab that. So this is the bed, which has the uh, polyamide heater installed. It already has the thermal fuse, which is rated for 135 degrees. This is a 100 watt heater. It's more powerful than the standard bed and will get the temperature up quicker. And with that is the upgraded power supply. Uh, this is a Morn Sun 200 because you need the extra capacity to run the higher output heated bed. For my MCU, I'm going with the Manta 4P from Big Tree Tech. It has room for four stepper controllers. There's a number of USB ports, uh, HDMI. I am going to run this with a Raspberry Pi CM4. So that will give me the ability to use the CSI camera interface. To make things a little easier to wire, I am going to use one of our PCB umbilical kits. So there is this board that gets connected to the frame. All of the outputs from the MCU will go into here. Then I have my umbilical cable, which will go from that PCB to the tool head board that will ride on the tool head. Uh, I decided not to go with the Pico umbilical just because to me, that's a little bit of overcomplicating the wiring. Uh, there's no reason not to do it if you're more comfortable with it. Uh, given the fact that those wires are only running about a foot, I'm fine just doing a hard wire. And I like the fact that I can very easily remove both ends of this umbilical. If I do get a wire break, it's not that big a deal to repin it or just replace this. Oh, and the last thing is I'm going to run uh, the TMC 2226 drivers because they hopefully will deal with the lessened cooling of the electronics bay a little bit better than 2209s would. And for some of the last details, I'm going to be using one of our black double-sided textured smooth PEI plates. This is one of my... No, it's not one of my, it is my favorite plate that I've ever worked with. Um, it's a great textured, but not overly textured surface. Uh, the way I normally describe it is where most plates kind of feel like an 80 grit sandpaper. This is more like a 220, so there's still some bite to it, but it is a much smoother finish. And then if I ever want, I do have the smooth side available, which I've used smooth a couple of times. I generally prefer texture, but options are good. Also using, this is going to be next to impossible to see, but I am using one of our Undertaker 0.4 millimeter tungsten carbide nozzles. Uh, this is just a fantastic nozzle. I don't have to worry about what filament I put through here. As long as it can fit through a 0.4, it will go. Um, no problems with anything abrasive. Um, they just work. I have one on my V2.4. Absolutely love it. I also have a V6 that I could swap in as well. And finally, to give myself a little light as well as a little fun inside the build chamber, 
I'm going to be installing our freshly minted rainbow matchsticks. So these are addressable RGB LEDs. I know that uh, a lot of people prefer to use an RGBW or a pure white light in their build volume, but uh, let's have a little fun. I'm not going full Timmet, but a little bit of lighting couldn't hurt. So that's pretty much my build laid out. I'm going to get started hopefully within the next day or so. Like I said, I've got about a month to get this thing built and ready to go. As far as the videos, I'm not planning on doing a full build log. Uh, there are tons of people out there who have already done it and done it better than I could. Uh, Steve Builds and Nero, I'm looking at you, uh, as well as a ton of other people. I am planning on doing a couple of videos in between now and when it's finished. I'm hoping to sit down with my coworker Sivy who has already built a V0 and talk about some mods and some tips and tricks when it comes to building a V0. I'm planning on doing a video when I get ready to set up my electronics, not necessarily going through the wiring because hours of crimping is no fun for anyone, especially not to just watch, but uh, setting up and doing the configuration of the printer, I might do that. And I'm planning on doing a video with the crew once it's up and running to do some tuning and we'll see just what kind of stupid performance we can get out of the Berserker motion system. So if you have any ideas for any videos, uh, but especially anything related to a V0 build, leave a comment and I'll see if I can incorporate that in. Otherwise, I'll uh, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.